In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we are in this season of Christmas, we need to reflect on the life of Jesus Christ, who humbled himself and came among us as a simple human being in order to share our sorrows, our joys, and our happiness, and in order to make us children of God. And today, as we offer this Holy Eucharist in honor of the Lord Jesus Christ, in honor of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, let us ask the Lord Jesus to give us that grace to be humble and gentle, so that we may, imitating him, may glorify his mighty name through our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant we ask Almighty God that the nativity of the Savior of the world may known by the guidance of a star, may be revealed ever more fully to our minds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Kindly turn to page number 241 from the New Testament. Page number 241 from the New Testament. First reading. A reading from the first letter of St. John, chapter 5, verses 5 to 13. Chapter 5, verses 5 to 13. Who is that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. There are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony, God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Kindly turn to page number 667 from the book of Psalms. Page number 667 from the book of Psalms. Psalm 147, verses 12 to 15, 19 to 20. Our response. 
all the nations shall fall prostrate before you O Lord Psalm 147 verses 12 to 15 Praise the Lord O Jerusalem praise your God O Zion for he strengthens the bars of your gates he blesses your children within you he grants peace within your borders he fills you with the finest of wheat he sends out his command to the earth his word runs swiftly verses 19 and 20 he declares his word to jacob his statutes and ordinances to israel he has not dealt thus with any other nation they do not know his ordinances praise the lord our response all the nations shall fall prostrate before you o lord kindly stand for the acclamation Alleluia alleluia A great prophet has arisen among us God has visited his people Alleluia Lord be with you a reading from the holy gospel according to saint luke glory to you o lord chapter 5 and page 62 verses 12 to 16 chapter 5 verses 12 to 16 Once when Jesus was in one of the cities there was a man covered with leprosy when he saw Jesus he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him Lord if you choose you can make me clean then Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said I do choose be made clean immediately the leprosy left him and he ordered him to tell no one go he said and show yourself to the priest and as moses commanded make an offering for your cleansing for a testimony to them but now more than ever the word about jesus spread abroad and many crowds would gather to hear him and be cured of their diseases but he would withdraw to a deserted place and pray the gospel of the lord praise be to your lord jesus christ may the words of the gospel wipe away our sins my brothers and sisters in the first reading today from the first letter of john the word of god tells us that we have three kinds of testimony that is the water the blood and the holy spirit it is through the waters god has cleansed us and set us free from the original sin and made us children of god it is through the precious blood of jesus christ that we are redeemed from the clutches of jesus clutches of satan and we have become children of god it is by the power of the holy spirit 
we are able to call God as Abba Father. When Jesus was on the cross when he died, the soldier pierced his side and the word of God says, blood and water came out of his side. Blood and water came out of his side. This is the source of all the sacraments. All the sacraments flow from this water and blood which has come out of the side of Jesus Christ. In the waters we are made clean. Through the precious blood of Jesus we are made holy and blameless and Jesus nourishes us with his body and blood. And in the gospel today we see two things which Jesus did. When the leper came to him and bowed down and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He expressed his sorrow. At the same time, he expressed his faith in Jesus that he would be able to heal him. And the first thing that Jesus did was he stretched out his hand and touched him. In those days, leprosy was a dreaded disease. And if anyone is struck with leprosy, he is thrown away from the house, thrown away from the village, and they have to re remain in a remote areas, deserted areas, and the, pay, the relatives used to, out of mercy, they used to give some food, and they used to live on that food. That was a miserable situation. More than the disease, they become social outcasts. And here Jesus, by touching him, says, your leprosy is not a barrier for me to love you. Because of the leprosy, the parents deserted him, the relatives deserted him, the villagers deserted him, but Jesus says, I will not desert you. That is the compassion that we need to show to one another in our day-to-day -day life if we want to be true Christians. Many a time we do a lot of charitable work. We help people, we give alms to people, in many ways. But the word of God says in the book of Sirach, chapter 18, verses 15 onwards, the word of God says that more than helping, that attitude towards that person is important. It says, my child, do not mix up reproach with your good deeds or spoil your gift by harsh words. Does not the dew give relief from the scorching heat, so a word is better than a gift. Indeed, does not a word surpass a good gift? Both are to be found in a gracious person. So the word of God very clearly tells us, more than the help that you render, the attitude to you have towards that person is more important. That compassion and that love which you show through that gift is more important and it is more touching than the gift that you give to people the help that you render to people. And that's why we as children of God should always be filled with that compassion of the Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he was filled with compassion. He spoke to them and he gave them bread to eat. He multiplied the five loaves and two fish and fed 5,000 men apart from women and children. That is the compassion Jesus has showed to the people. And that is the same compassion if you want to be true children of Jesus Christ and followers of Jesus Christ that we need to show in our day-to-day -day life. Not only to our family members, but also to our relatives and brother, our kith and kin, and also the neighbors and people who are at our workplace. When you show this compassion and this touch, that compassionate touch, that will bring a lot of transformation in the lives of the people. By that, you will show that you are really a genuine Christian. Second thing the Lord did was, he said, I, I want to heal you, be healed. And Jesus healed him, and instantly he was healed. So Jesus not only showed that compassion, but he reached out to him and gave him that gift of healing. And this is what we need to do. We need to show compassion at the same time. We need to give whatever we can to help the people who are in difficulties and problems to elevate their sufferings. And this is what we need to do, says the word of God. If you are able to do this, surely you will be a child of God. God will look at you and say, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter, I am pleased with you. This is exactly what Mother Teresa has done. 
she showed that compassion to those less fortunate people who are thrown on the roads she lifted them she cared for them and she begged others to help them so that she can feed them and that's the reason why she has become so famous and she has become an inspiration for all the christians and today as we offer this holy eucharist let us ask the lord lord fill me with your love and with your compassion give me the grace always to manifest this love and this compassion through every word that i speak to others and through every activity that i render towards others let this be our prayer today as we offer this holy eucharist and of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen and yours may be acceptable to god the almighty father receive with favor o lord we pray the offerings of your people that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through their heavenly mysteries through christ our lord amen The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. and when he appeared in our mortal nature you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature and so with all the angels and archangels and with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim holy lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory o sun and the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son and the Highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread. 
and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, Confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, Bala, our Bishop, and with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters, Francis George, A. Alfonso, Justin Dominic, who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Anthony and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our faith, and you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Those who are celebrating their birthdays or wedding anniversaries can come forward. Let us pray. O God, who touches through our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts, that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>